a hearty good afternoon and welcome to a session on can a man with low sperm count have a baby we are glad to have dr anuranjita palavi among us today to help us understand this topic uh, low semen count is often caused by lifestyle factors other medical factors blockages to the passage or genetic conditions like affect uh, affecting uh, the sperm production and sometimes even a condition called uh, azoospermia which is, which can be treated successfully so it's important for us to understand uh, can a man with low sperm count have a baby and hence do not hesitate to ask questions if you have related to the topic so doctor you have the stage thank you so much hi i am dr anuranjita pallavi consultant at apollo fertility navi mumbai so yes it's a very important topic on which i'm going to speak uh, today is can a man with low sperm count can uh, can they have their own genetic child so you know low means it's a very arbitrary uh, terminology which is used uh, so first i would go ahead with what is the normal semen count what all parameters we uh, look in a semen analysis and how do we decide the mode of uh, treatment which the which is suitable for that particular patient so when we look at the semen analysis there are basically three parameters which we look at first is the count count uh, the normal according to the latest who guidelines if you see the latest who guidelines it says that the sperm count should be more than 15 million per ml or 39 million in the total sample so this is the normal sperm count the second one uh, the parameter which we uh, look at the semen analysis is uh, the sperm motility so see there are three types of motility we have uh, initially what they used to initially according to the who guidelines if you see the old uh, classification of the motility parameter so in motility parameter uh, they used to write initially the rapid progressive one the sluggishly progressive one and then in motile and uh, dead sperms but now this terminology has uh, been changed and uh, there is no term as uh, because i keep on seeing the reports uh, with the same thing that you know they still categorize it it as uh, rapidly progressive and slowly progressive but then there is nothing like that it is uh, not it is uh, now divided into three categories the motility aspect i'm talking about the motility is divided into rapidly progressive or uh, you know the linear progressive motility we have the non progressive motility and we have the immotile sperms which are there in the sample so always remember progressive non progressive and immotile there is no uh, categorization as sluggishly uh, sluggish motility in uh, the semen analysis uh, whenever we are considering, uh, considering the motility aspect now the third parameter which we uh, look at in the semen analysis is the morphology what do we mean by morphology is how is the sperm looking so the look of the uh, sperm like whether the head is normal whether the tail is normal whether the neck is normal so according to these are the parameters which we look for in the morphology morphology meaning the look of the sperm so if you go to the uh, classification or uh, the range what we call it as uh, whenever we uh, where, uh, when do we call it as a normal mor uh, morphology is when it is around 4% of the total sample which we have examined so motility is around 15 million per ml uh, sorry the count is 14 uh, 15 million per ml this is the normal one normal semen analysis whenever we look at the semen analysis in an ivf clinic or in an infertility clinic we look at the count which should be minimum of 15 million per ml motility should be again progressive motility around 32% of the total sample and the morphology should be 4% so these are the three parameters which we look at in a semen analysis and then decide as to what modality of treatment which will help which patient so uh, let us come to it one by one so first is the count which i said now count can be anywhere between like azoospermia like the patient does not have any sperms in the semen from uh, sperm count as low as 1 million on 0.5 million to 5 million to 10 million to maybe you know 15 million is the average to 20 million so suppose if a couple if a young couple walks in with a female uh, here i am talking only about the male factor of infertility and what are the treatments available when the motility is less or other parameters like the count is less or the motility is less or uh, the morphology is a problem now uh, getting into this uh, coming into the normal morphology uh, normal uh, physiology if you say what do i mean by why do we need this uh, motility 
uh, motility, see what happens is if we look at the physiological aspect, the sperms are formed inside, uh, the embryo is formed inside the tube. But whenever, uh, you know, the couple has relation, the sperms or the semen is deposited inside the vagina. So the sperms have to travel in a linear progressive way right from the vagina up into the uterus, up to the tubes for the fertilization to occur. So this is the path which the sperm follows for fertilization. So that is why this progressive motility is more important. And that is why that terminology of sluggish motility has been removed. Why? Because sluggish motility is nothing but they just keep on moving at the same place. So it's like you know, you leave it inside the uterus also, but still they will not be able to reach the tube because they are just moving at the same place. So that is why that terminology has been removed. And now in the WHO guidelines, we have a progressive motility, we have a non-progressive motility, and we have an immotile. So these are the three class, uh, three categories uh, on which we divide the motility. And now you're clear as to why this motility is required because the sperms have to travel right from the uh, vagina into the uterus up to the tubes. So this is the motility. Uh, this is the role of the motility of the sperms. So when a couple comes in, you know, when we look at the semen parameters, considering the wife is normal, again, it depends on a lot of factors. Suppose if the count, suppose uh, if the count is 15, if, if it is between 10 to 15 million, uh, the progressive motility is you know around 20 percent morphology is around three percent so what do we advise these patients so if the count is anywhere between 10 to uh, 15 million per ml motility is 20 to 32 percent morphology is anywhere three to four percent we advise them at least you know and if they have been trying for a long time long time in the sense at least one year of natural try they have had you know unprotected uh, intercourse at least three times a uh, week for like a year if they fit into these uh, you know this category we advise them at least to go ahead with two to three cycles of iui in iui if there is iui helps in specifically in patients who have motility issues why because uh, you know the as i told you that the sperms have to travel right from the vagina into the uh, tubes so in an iui iui is an assisted uh, technology where we wash the sperms and at the time of the egg rupture with the help of a thin catheter we leave the sperms inside the uterus up in the uterus so that the distance traveled by the sperms ultimately only one sperm is required but still you know we require this number uh, that is because they have, you know, gone through a lot of studies and they have come up with the conclusion. So that is what we do in an IUI. We wash the sperm, we concentrate, and a highly concentrated sperm uh, is left inside the uterus in the upper part so that the distance traveled by the sperms is lessened. Okay, they have to travel only inside the uterus up till the tubes. So IUI definitely helps in patients who have, you know, uh, motility is low but not very low. Very low means anything between 5, 10 or 15 percent. We do not advise them to go ahead with an IUI. Why uh, we do not advise them to go in an IUI? Because that's the guideline which has been uh, set. So uh, this is the motility part where we advise them IUI. If anywhere the count is 10 to 15 million with the motility of 20 percent and morphology is also fine around 3 to 4 percent. Now what happens if the count is less? Now, uh, what happens is, uh, suppose a patient comes uh, to us where a count is 5 to 6 million, motility is around 5 to 10 percent, and the morphology is 1 percent. Then the treatment for these patients uh, remain IVF, uh, because in these patients, IVF is most beneficial because the number of sperms, nowadays we do not do IVF, we do ICSI, and it is ICSI for all. ICSI meaning intracytoplasmic sperm injection. What do we do in an ICSI is, like uh, once the uh, ovum pickup has been done, we have collected the eggs. Suppose it's 10 eggs. So out of that 1 million or 2 million or 5 million, we just require only 10 good sperms, which we are able to find. So in these patients with a low sperm count, with a low motility, as well as slightly decreased morphology, IVF, you know, becomes the answer. Because the number of sperms which are required in an ICSI is much less as compared to an IUI or the natural try. So this is the uh, treatment which we uh, suggest in a patient when the sperm count is less than 10 million, morphology is 1 to 2 percent and motility is around anywhere between less than 15 percent. Because 
more beneficial. So uh, this is uh, how we categorize and we advise the treatment. Anywhere between 10 to 15 million, motility 20 to 32 percent, and morphology is 3 to 4 percent, it is an IUI. However, if it is less than 10 million and uh, the count is, uh, uh, the motility is anywhere between 0 to 15, even we have seen zero motility also and 15% uh, uh, and uh, the morphology is anywhere between 1 to 2%. We advise them IVF because IVF gives a better success rate as compared to an IUI. So uh, sometimes some, uh, what are the causes of these uh, low motility? Basically, how does, you know, this, it is actually multifactorial. If we look at the causes of uh, low sperm count or the motility, you know, it is always multifactorial. However, azoospermia, if we go directly with the absence of the sperms, it's a whole different uh, thing where we can have an obstructive one or a non-obstructive non one. In azoospermia, basically non-obstructive one where there is a defect in the production of the sperms, whereas in obstructive one, uh, there is an obstruction in the path. So obstructive ones are easier to treat, uh, you know, with IVF as compared to an uh, non-obstructive one, which... Uh, you know, is because of the decrease in the sperm production only. However, obstruction is that the sperm production is normal, whereas uh, the path is blocked. So, azoospermia obstructive, again, uh, IVF remains the treatment of choice. Uh, with IVF, we combine it with a procedure which is called as a TSA. TSA is testicular sperm extraction, where we put in a needle and we extract the sperms directly from the testes. So it is IVF combined with TSA gives us results in an obstructive azoospermia. Non-obstructive azoospermia, yes, definitely we put them on hormonal injections trying to produce their, uh, depending upon the etiology again, if it is a genetic and if it has already, you know, undescended testes where it has not descended inside the scrotum and it has already failed, we cannot do much about it. However, if, uh, you know, FSH, that is the hormone when the testes fail, the brain hormone is within like slightly normal uh in the like around 8 10 around then still we can give a trial of testicular sperm extraction where we put in a needle and extract the sperms or we can go ahead with micro tsa micro tsa is again a surgical procedure where we open up all the testes and we pick out those tubules uh under microscope high magnification microscope which are tend to have uh sperms and then we go ahead with the xc and go ahead with the uh embryo transfer so this was about uh, azoospermia, then low sperm count, definitely less than uh, 10 million and motility less than uh, uh, zero to anywhere between zero to 15 percent and morphology less. It is IVF. After that, it becomes an IUI. So these are the treatment which we offer. Causes sometimes uh, causes low motility or the low count can also happen due to a condition which is called as a varicocele. Normally, what is this varicocele is, varicocele, uh, see, uh, the testes are outside the body because it requires a temperature lesser than the body for the sperms to survive. So that's the whole concept. So what happens, and this exchange of temperature it is brought about some veins which are surrounding the testes. So what happens, sometimes these veins become defective due to which this exchange of temperature is not able to happen and uh, as a result of which uh, the temperature of the testes rises due to which the sperm production as well as the motility is affected as well as the morphology is affected. So in those patients if they have a grade 3, grade 4, something known as a varicocele where you know your andrologist can examine and tell you that you are a grade 3 or grade 4 varicocele, surgery definitely helps. You know if you can go ahead with the micro varicocelectomy, it definitely helps it improve uh, you know and the treatment can upgrade from maybe an IVF to an IUI. So, suppose you are at the range of 8 to 10 million and 8 million and motility is slightly like 15% and if you go ahead with a micro varicocelectomy, definitely there is an increase in the motility of the sperms as well as the number which helps in, you know, upgradation. Maybe, you know, instead of an IVF, you might require an IUI, but sometimes it may not happen also. So uh, this was all about uh, sperm motility, sperm count and, you know, no sperms in the semen. And, uh, you know, definitely I would say at the end of this discussion that uh, you can definitely have your own child. You can definitely, uh, you know, conceive and with all the treatment modalities which we have. Okay. Thank you. Nice talking to you.